Hi everybody, my name is Amanda Nichols and I'm a solutions engineer at Postman. Today, we're gonna dive into what it actually means to build agentic workflows, a practical guide on how to get started and a little bit about why abstraction is the real superpower. So let's start with a question I think a lot of us ask, which is how do I actually build an agentic workflow? The hype is all around us and it's very real. Agents can reason, they can act autonomously and they can plug into all sorts of tools but the practical how of how we get started is often less clear. This is partially because most of today's systems are still designed around linear workflows. You call an API and you get a result. It's deterministic, it's hard-coded, and it can sometimes be very brittle. But agentic workflows are different. They're modular and reactive and they use tools. So you're not just calling an API, you're giving an AI agent access to capabilities and then letting that agent decide how to use them. So in order to break out of that linear mindset, we start by looking at any process and asking three questions. What is the goal? What are the tools or APIs available to get there? And what action would a human or an AI agent take to accomplish it? From there, we can reverse engineer those actions to determine how we externalize this logic into a system that an agent can use on demand. And that's really where AI becomes transformative as a decision-making layer that's coordinating tools in real time. So if we want to build truly agentic systems, then we need to stop thinking only in endpoints, but also think in the capabilities and sets of tools that we can make available to our agents. So today we're gonna to look at this flow I have here. It's an example of how our Zendesk autonomous customer service agent works. When a customer request comes in, starting at the request block, an event is created. Then we move to this condition block where we have a conditional logic system in place. If the event is a new ticket, it's routed to our autonomous customer support agent. Otherwise, if the ticket is marked as solved, we send it to our create question answer pair process where we update the data in our vector database. Let's click into the customer support agent workflow. We can see that when the customer support agent receives a ticket, we take the input of that ticket ID and use it to fetch the full ticket details from Zendesk. In a, inside our Create with AI block, we ask AI to convert that ticket data into an embedding, which is a format suitable for querying our vector database. In this case, we're using Pinecone. Inside this Retrieve Embeddings block is where we see that embedding being used. And if we click into this process, we can see the steps here are to create our embeddings based on our request from the customer, and then query our database for relevant information to the customer support request. Now, in another create with AI block, we're gonna ask AI to determine if that the, there is enough information available to answer our customer's questions. We ask the AI block to return a true false for whether or not we have an answer, and then the context and answer itself. This is AI behaving deterministically to tell us how we need to proceed with this customer support request. We output the AI response here back to our customer support agent flow. And this information will allow our agent to decide how to proceed. Returning to our customer support agent, we see that the embedding block returned the response generated from that previous AI step. And then we have a classic if case, where if the response was true, we can send the context to the autonomous agent response block. In this case, the agent will respond directly to the Zendesk ticket and close it out. And there's no further engagement needed, the customer has their answer. If, however, we lacked sufficient information, we had a false answer, the case is escalated. We go down a human path. A human support team is notified via Slack or Teams, and the AI automatically replies to the customer saying that we have a human support agent notified and we'll get back to them soon. Once that's done, a human is going to step in and resolve that issue. A person will evaluate that customer question, do a little research, and come up with an appropriate response. Then they're going to update that Zendesk ticket with the new information, which means we will have a new custom question and answer pair. So once our human friend has updated our Zendesk ticket, we trigger this flow again from the beginning. But now that the status of the Zendesk ticket is marked as solved, we take the newly provided answer and update our Pinecone vector database, adding this new question answer pair. This ensures that if the same or a very similar question is asked in the future, our AI agent will now have enough context to handle it autonomously. So our autonomous AI agent in this flow can automatically resolve support tickets when there's sufficient info available. 
involve human agents when there isn't, and then learn from that human response to improve its future performance. This is a dynamic loop between automation and human collaboration to continually improve that customer support quality. This is excellent and it works really well in our flow, but what if we wanna make this flow available for other agents to use? This is where we're gonna talk about MCP servers. MCP stands for Model Context Protocol, and it's a critical part of building agentic systems that are both modular and intelligent. You can think of MCP as the USB-C of the AI world. Before USB-C, you needed different cables for different connections, you know, HDMI for displays, USB-A for data, lightning cables if you're part of the Apple ecosystem, and if you are, probably have about 100 of those living somewhere under your couch. Similarly, before MCP, developers had to build custom connections for each AI model and each service that they wanted to integrate with, which is a time-consuming process that creates vendor lock-in. Just like in the end, I have no choice but to have 30 lightning cables living under my couch. But just like USB-C lets me connect to my iPhone now and countless other devices with a single standard, MCP creates a universal adapter between AI models and the digital world so that you can build a connection once and use it with any compatible model. This is the MCP server acting as a smart middle layer for our agents. So our agent doesn't interface directly with our APIs. It sends an intent to our MCP server, and then our MCP server can interpret the command from our agent and route that command to the appropriate tool in its server, and then finally return the result back to our agent. Another way to put it is that MCP is the glue between our natural language and our structured actions. It's what makes it possible for an AI agent to be asked something like, get me the top headlines, and have that translate into a structured API call, run through a logic flow, and return a usable output. By the way, Postman has a stellar MCP server capability. We're not going to look at that today, but I do highly recommend you check it out. So similar to what we looked at before, I've got a flow here that calls the New York Times API and retrieves the top headlines. This API request is really simple compared to our last one. If we look inside this New York Times block, we see that we're just fetching the top news stories and then returning them back to the top news stories flow. And then we're feeding those out as top headlines in the response body. When we deploy this flow, we've now made it accessible via API to be called from other resources, and we can leverage this action outside of Postman, like through Glaude. So we can ask Claude to get us the latest headlines, and Claude's gonna go ahead and grab the top headlines for us. But behind the scenes, I already had my MCP server running in the background. So when I ask Claude to get the headlines, Claude's actually calling that MCP server, which in turn is interfacing to the Flow's top news stories API. The magic here is the abstraction that MCP provides. Claude doesn't need to know how to engage with my Flow's API. MCP is handling that translation. If we check out the response here, we can see that the data is indeed coming from the New York Times API. But that source doesn't matter to my agent. I could swap out this New York Times API block for this Hacker News API and get a completely different vibe and type of news source response. And Claude doesn't need to know. My MCP server doesn't even need to be redeployed because I've externalized that logic and can seamlessly update my agent's behavior without redeploying anything except my flow. And that's the magic of abstracting declarative logic for MCP to interpret to our agent. So let's wrap this up. I've got three big takeaways. First, agentic workflows are not a mystery. They're built by giving agents access to tools and then the logic to use them effectively. We unlock adaptability by separating the what from the how. Second, APIs are the lifeblood of agentic AI. Your agents can't act without tools and tools in our modern stack mean APIs. So whether you're fetching headlines, pulling data from your CRM, or triggering a support escalation, the agent is only as powerful as the APIs it can access and the context it receives through them. And lastly, Postman Flows makes this power really accessible. It's declarative visual logic abstracted from your agent and exposed via API. And that is how we can bring super-powered agentic systems to life. Thank you so much for your time today.